Now, the only thing I like better than learning about the history of human civilization is when I get to rewrite it. <laughs> <laughs> When it comes to global strategy games, the Civilization series is the first one we always think of. Yes, it's one of those series of games where you can just get lost for days, slowly conquering the world turn by turn. Civilization Revolution 2 is the sequel to the 2008 game, but now it's been remade for iOS and soon for Android portable devices. Your job remains the same, however, to be the best world leader you can be at any cost. Yes, and I can't think of a better way to do that than on the go. The first thing you do in this game is pick a world leader, so naturally I went for Napoleon. Basically, how it works is each round you make choices about what your leader should be doing. You might want to start constructing some buildings to grow your cities and make them more productive, or build settlers and go conquer new lands. Or invest in a world wonder and raise the cultural level of your empire. Or maybe you just want to build an army of tanks and roll out! Ha <laughs> ha Taste my steel! At the end of each turn, you wait and see what your enemies or frenemies get up to, and then you do it all again. Even though this Revolution series is a bit simpler compared to the other Civ games, I still enjoy the freedom it gives you. Yeah, me too. And it's good that winning isn't just about destroying your enemy, because that would be tedious. For example, you can also win the game just by having a highly cultured society. Mm, I would have liked to have seen some more diplomatic options, however. I found it hard to team up and plot with other nations and world leaders. However, there are a few different modes to try out. Uh, for example, live events which have newly crafted challenges like trying to liberate America from British rule pop up from time to time. Oh. It's best to start with the tutorial, but it's far too limited in my opinion, especially for newcomers. Yeah, I don't think anyone new to the series would be able to grasp the depth of this game from what little there is in that tutorial. Hmm. Well, you can go ahead and read the Civilopedia, which has lots of facts and information about everything in the game. Uh, there's also some fun historical facts. Well, that is true, Darren, but I just think some more tips would have been helpful to get through those higher difficulties. Well, Bajo, you could argue that half the fun of this is working out how the systems of this game work. You know, a, a failure will lead to a better victory next round. A failure is still a failure, Hex. There are some interesting systems at play in this game. Uh, for example, as a unit racks up more battle wins, the easier it can rank up and obtain perks. Receiving a 100% plus damage bonus to attacking cities right before you're about to embark on an assault is pretty exciting, I can tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the rank up bonuses are good, aren't they? And I like how you get a choice so that you can really customise your army. Yeah, I got quite attached to my veteran units. There's an okay variety of units you can make, some more would have been nice, but it actually bugs me that my planes can be stopped by sword-wielding infantry. Illogical. Yeah, but that's a civilization thing, I think. It's not a clear-cut, black-and-white, rock-paper-scissors combat system like in other strategy games. Illogical. I was really curious how this game would play on a touchscreen. I think it's the perfect platform for being commander-in-chief and looking down at your units and moving them about, but I don't think they quite got it right. Mm, indeed, Bajo. There are many interface issues, even if you don't have pasta scoop hands like me. Uh, for example, you may want to click on a unit near a town, but quite often the box which shows the name of the town gets in the way, so you have to click around it or zoom right in. Ugh. Yeah, that's quite tedious, isn't it? Especially when you've got a big army and lots of units on screen. We played this with an iPad too, which granted is getting a bit old now, but it was just so framey, and I've just seen games that look better than this run better as well. Mm, it's especially laggy when you get close to winning the game. Maybe going 3D with the graphics was a bad idea. There's nothing worse than severe frame rate issues when you're so close to victory. <sighs> Yes, in fact, I'd say this game runs so poorly that unless you have the latest tablet right off the shelf, the fastest one available, I could not recommend it. There are even some sound effects missing at times in battles. Overall, guys, I thought this was a bit of a misstep, but, you know, games like this are pretty rare in the portable stores, and I think there's still a lot of depth here for fans of the genre, so I'm going to give it six. Yeah, I, I want to play this game on portable devices. I just need it to be much better, especially for that very expensive price tag for a portable game, so I'm going to give it four. Mm -hmm.